Hello and welcome to another video review. This is A Golden Wake for PC, Mac, and Linux. This is a point-and-click adventure game developed by Grundislav Games and published by Wajidai Games and released in October of 2014. And it's interesting for a couple of reasons, the first of which being it's set in the 1920s, specifically during the Florida land boom. If you're not familiar with that particular event, basically there was a big real estate bubble in Florida in the 20s that actually burst in 1925, and it pretty much shaped the next few decades for Florida, so it was actually a pretty big deal even though you don't really hear about it all that much. And more specifically, the major events in this game really surround the creation of the city of Coral Gables, which if you're not familiar with that, it's where the University of Miami is. It's basically right outside of Miami. It's a planned community. And so you're basically going along and running into a bunch of historical characters and getting yourself wrapped up in the creation of this new planned community, all during the Roaring Twenties, which means that you're dealing with some pretty interesting historical background here. So how does that actually translate to being an interesting game? Let's find out. Well, as far as presentation goes, it's definitely pretty typical of a higher-end AGS developer, AGS being, of course, Adventure Game Studio, which, of course, means that this is a 2D point-and-click adventure game where everything is in sprite work. The sprites in this are decently detailed. They're not amazing, but the sprite work is generally okay, particularly in the portrait department, where several of the portraits are actually modeled after actual photographs, so that actually works out in the game's favor. You see, several of the characters in this game are actually modeled after real-life historical figures and at the end of the game it actually goes through an epilogue sequence and gives you some historical background on what happened to these characters after the events of the game. And it actually shows the in-game portrait first and then that fades to a pixelized version of the actual photograph of that person. And they're pretty much spot on so they did a pretty good job with that. But apart from that, the environments are rather static. There's not a huge amount going on in the vast majority of them other than maybe people walking down the street. And so while they are fairly detailed, unfortunately there's just not a lot going on to them and they end up really not being all that interesting to look at. The character animations also end up looking a bit stiff at times, and so it's actually really not a particularly good-looking adventure game studio game, even though the quality is certainly not bad. It's just that it's not up to par with some of the other Wajidai published games. At least it's fairly colorful, and the aesthetic does match the 1920s, early 1930s look they were trying to capture, so they did a good job with that. But then there's the sound design, which is alright, but nothing particularly amazing. The voice acting is generally pretty well done, it's just that a lot of the dialogue itself is actually kind of stiff and awkward, so while they did do what they could with what they had, there's really only so much they could have done with it to begin with. And then there's the sound effects, which work but aren't particularly impressive, there's nothing that really stands out as particularly well done, it's all just stuff that works well for what it does and is really unremarkable. The music is fitting for what they were going for, which again is that 1920s aesthetic, but it's kind of bland and uninteresting when you really get down to it. There's no one tune in particular that really sticks out, and it all just kind of blends together to make something that is really unremarkable in the long run. So while it isn't bad, it doesn't really stick with you like some other game soundtracks would. But of course, as lackluster as the presentation can be at times, what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, particularly the story because the gameplay in this is actually pretty minimal. You play as Alfred Alfie Banks, who starts out the game as a real estate agent working at his father's former office, and pretty soon he is basically betrayed by his co-workers and ends up having to find a new job, which means that he checks the paper and finds that there's a big land boom going on in Miami. So he goes down to Miami to get a piece of the real estate boom. And from there, he's basically trying to make a name for himself as well as restore the legacy of his father's name because his father's name was big in real estate. And along the way, he runs into a lot of significant historical figures for that particular area and ends up being heavily involved in the creation of Coral Gables. And of course, all of this is taking place during Prohibition era, so gangsters are certainly involved. It seems like a great setup for what should be an interesting adventure romp, and what ends up actually happening is that the plot is really the most uninteresting part of the entire game. Half of the game is spent basically just trying to do real estate, and then the other half of it is split between basically becoming a mobster and then basically trying to redeem yourself after becoming a mobster. The plot never really picks up, it just kind of meanders along the entire time and never really gets any better than simply being a real estate agent. 
Alfie himself is just a boring character. He's naive at the beginning of the game, and by the end of the game, he's cynical. But it's an incredibly predictable change, and you never really get attached to him. It's pretty impossible to, actually. He has about the personality of a piece of wet tissue paper. A lot of this comes from the dialogue itself, because the voice actor does the best he can with what he's got, but what he's got to work with is some rather stilted, awkward dialogue that features some odd word choices like his signature curse, which is horse feathers, and that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know about this guy. But in general, the idea of being a real estate salesman just isn't very interesting, and that really does play out more when you get into the actual gameplay, because the gameplay in this is actually incredibly boring for an adventure game. The vast, vast majority of the game is spent running around doing errands for people, and you never feel like you're the lead character in an adventure, you feel like you're just some errand boy running around doing things for other people so they can actually get stuff done in your stead. All the while, you're basically being told that your character is important to all of this and that you're actually being rewarded for your efforts when you're really not being rewarded for your efforts. And even Alfie himself actually acknowledges this at one point, and that's when he goes off to join the mob, but even then, it's just incredibly bland when you actually get down to it. You'd think that once the character joins the mob that things would get more interesting, but they don't. You're doing just more of the same, and what you're basically doing at that point is using your skills as a salesman to persuade people over to working with the mob, and that's just not particularly interesting when you get down to it. There's no outwitting people, there's no clever puzzles, it's really just down to doing some brain-dead simple puzzles followed by some persuasion, and the persuasion mechanic really is more trial and error than anything else. You're basically given one of three options to say to the person, and if they respond well to it, their face will move a certain way, and if they respond negatively to it, it'll move another way. If you get all of the options correct, then you persuade them and you move along. If you don't get them all correct, then there's another way to actually solve the issue, which kind of defeats the point of having the persuasion mechanic in the first place. Although, even with the alternate issue, if you just want to go back and do more trial and error with the actual puzzle itself, you don't really need to worry too much about that because you can save anywhere, and of course, you can go back to a previous save and mess around with it and get the appropriate responses. But apart from the persuasion mechanic, there's really nothing else to this game. It's just the story, the dialogue, some incredibly simplistic puzzles, and one really annoying bit where you're actually in a car and you're trying to get someone to latch onto a ladder so they can get into a plane, which basically amounts to being in the right spot at the right time and then being able to do a quick sequence of action so it actually works properly. And really, all of that is about trial and error. There's really no puzzle in this game that is outright logic-based. It's all incredibly simplistic stuff. Go here, find this obvious object, bring it back to the location where you need it to be, and you're good to go. This incredibly easy puzzle design mixed in with the simplistic persuasion mechanic and, more importantly, the rather extreme linearity of this where it gives you the illusion of choice, but really you need to do pretty much everything in a very specific order, with the particularly nasty bit of that being that the game pretty much outright tells you everywhere you need to go and everything you need to do to your face. It doesn't let you figure things out on your own. It's just, oh no, you need to go here and do this. And the hints it drops aren't so much hints as telling you exactly how to do things step by step. One of the biggest draws of adventure games is being able to figure out the puzzles on your own. Sure, the game is supposed to give you the information you need to figure it out, but you're supposed to be able to figure out the puzzles on your own by using your logical processes. When you get to this, there's really no logical processes involved other than a handful of puzzles, all of which are incredibly easy, I might add. So the vast majority of the puzzles in this thing are so incredibly simplistic and spelled out for you that they might as well not even be in the game to begin with. And so when the gameplay is so weak, it really falls to the story and the dialogue to bring things up, and it just doesn't. The dialogue is bland and uninteresting, and the story is boring.
Setting and aesthetics alone are not enough to carry a game, and in this particular case, that is what ultimately kills a Golden Wake. It's a game that had the potential to be really interesting and really compelling, but it ultimately ended up being the only Wajidai published game that I've actually not enjoyed. Hopefully Grundislav Games can learn from its mistakes here and actually produce something much, much more compelling in the future, because I feel like there's definitely some talent and attention to detail there, it's just that in this particular game it really didn't pan out very well for them. I ultimately give this a 2 out of 5. It's not a terrible game, you might be able to get something out of it if you get it on sale for cheap, but ultimately I just can't really recommend this game. It's just not very good. Thanks for watching.